What is going on guys? Welcome to your 14th JavaScript tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to start off teaching you guys something called an if statement and then we're going to learn about something called comparison operators. So basically an if statement is a really simple way to have your computer make a decision. You're going to give it a scenario and if it's true it's going to run a bit of code. For example if you say if the variable called Bucky is equal to 24 then run this bit of code. If it's not, then don't do anything. So really simple decision. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's go ahead and uh, make two variables and later on we'll compare them to each other. So make a variable named apples and set this equal to, you know, 20 or 34, whatever. And make a ver another variable called hot dogs and set this equal to like 53. It doesn't matter what numbers they are as long as they don't equal each other. So we have two variables, we already know what those do. Now let's go ahead and look at the basic syntax for an if statement. Now the if statement is set up like this all of the time. Have the word if right there and then go ahead and write two parentheses after that. Now inside these parentheses is where you're going to be making your comparison. You're going to say alright if apples is equal to hot dogs, if apples is greater than hot dogs, if apples is less than hot dogs and all that stuff. You're going to be comparing one thing against another. Now if that comparison is true it's going to go ahead and run the bit of code in between these curly brackets so go ahead and throw those in. So basically if statements work like this. It's going to test something right here and if that test is true or if they do match each other it's going to run this bit of code. So let's go ahead and give it something really simple to run. run. Document dot write um yay it worked something stupid like that. So let's go ahead and uh, give it a simple comparison right now and you may be thinking right this alright a simple comparison would make sense like apples equals hot dogs. I mean make one thing equal to another and that's a test. That's how I did it in math class. That's how it works. But whenever we make a comparison we have to follow one simple rule. We can't use a single equal sign ever because JavaScript already uses single equal sign whenever it sets a variable equal to a value. So whenever you're comparing two values you need to have two equal signs. And now you're testing alright does the value of apples equal to value of hot dogs. In other words, does 34 equal 53? If 34 does equal 53, it's going to print out yay it worked. If it doesn't equal 53, or if they don't equal each other, nothing's going to happen. So since they don't equal each other, let's go ahead and refresh and nothing happens. So let's go ahead and change these values to make apples equal 53 and hot dogs equal 53. So now apples does indeed equal hot dogs so this is going to be true and since this is true this is going to run. So let's go ahead and save this refresh it and check it out. Yay it worked. So now we can see the basics of an if statement. It's basically this again. You, you test what is called a condition. Now this condition is going to be true if it's true and it's going to be false if it's not true. If they equal each other in this case, it's going to be true. If they don't, it's going to be false. Anytime it's true, this bit of code is going to run. Anytime it's false, nothing's going to happen. So you're basically giving your computer a decision to make. If this is true, run this. If it's not, don't do anything. So aside from this double equal sign, we know that we can use the double equal sign to tell JavaScript compare two things. We can also give it a couple other symbols. We can say explanation point equals and what this means is if apples doesn't equal hot dogs go ahead and print this out. So check this out. Since they are alike and they do equal each other then this is going to be false. Since, tr well, let me go ahead and run this and show you guys. Nothing happens right here. So why is this false? Well, does apples not equal hot dogs? No, they do equal each other. So it's false. So this is a way of saying, all right, if apples is not equal to hot dogs, do this. So when exactly will this print out? Say you had 53 and 99. Well, now they don't equal each other. So this statement is true. And since this is true, I'm going to go ahead and print this out and it worked. 
So another thing that we can do is I showed you guys how to make it equals and how to make it not equals. So you can of course use greater than and less than. These are really easy ones. If apples is greater than hot dogs, aka if 53 is greater than 99, print this out. So can you guys guess what's going to happen? It doesn't print it out because 53 is not higher than 99. And again, I don't need to show you this, but I might as well do it anyways. If 53 is less than 99, which is indeed true, since this statement is true, then this is going to print out just like that. So that is why when I refresh it, it prints out. So those are the four most common, but I also need to uh, include one other thing. You can also have uh, greater than or equals to, and this say if it's greater than or if it is equals to, like 53 and 53 would work, and also 56 is greater than or equal to 53. But So just to verify that it does work, there you go, right there. And also you have less than and equals to. So in any scenario where apples is less than or equal to hot dogs, which it would be false in this case because 56 is not less than or equal to hot dogs, whenever you save it, it doesn't work. So check it out. So those are the basic ones. You, there are a couple other ones, but I don't want to confuse you guys for now. So in, when you want to compare two values to each other, use double equal signs. When you want to make sure that they're not equal to each other, use explanation point equal sign. And then you have your basics. Greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. So that's basics of what an if statement is. It pretty much tests something, and if it's true, it runs a little bit of code. So now you understand what conditional operators are, or excuse me, comparison operators, and also the if statement. So in the next tutorial, we're going to be going over kind of a more complex if statement, but it's probably going to be the one that you're going to be using more often. So it's actually not that difficult to learn. If you can understand this, then the next thing is going to be a breeze. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.